I feel that Act 55 is taking a lot of the, the special away from Hawaii. And uh, thank you for having me. Aloha.
Cynthia Rosetti. Yeah. Oh. Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. H
excited to only have the meeting here in Honolulu for the second round of these rules because in my opinion mm -hmm. these rules are still woefully inadequate to meet the intent of what was passed. Whether I agree with what was passed or not is a whole other animal. Um, I have just provided some copies of written testimony that actually go in and talk to specific sections in your rules that I have concerns about, one of which again is going to be public acknowledgement and allowing the voice of the public to be heard. Albeit you have this flow chart, this wonderful looking flow chart, that is not reflected anywhere in your rules. The only required meeting is the one meeting that you have in section 13302. <coughs> Uh, the, the one thing that was interesting is I've been listening to a lot of people this morning and while I agree with a lot of what has been stated and you'll see that in my written testimony, I did a, just a quick search for my own edification this morning to make sure I was not missing anything that I thought might be important because my largest concern the last time I spoke before you is the rules prior to this version, and even this version, does not adequately reflect what you may or may not do. Again, as you've heard, there are concerns regarding what you may or may not allow to occur in conservation land, what you may or may not allow to occur within agricultural land. Um, and I think this is indicative of the fact that your rules are inadequate as per the bill as it was passed. Um, and I will reflect on page 15, which was in the, the um, Senate Bill 1555, and it states, the corporation shall prepare the Hawaii land, public land optimization plan, which shall define and establish goals, objectives, policies, and priority guidelines for its public land optimization development strategy. And then it goes on to list what the plan will include. Well, interestingly enough, you do not even address in your rules if you are even going to put a plan together. And for most organizations, when something like that is in the statute, that becomes part of your rules. There should be rules as to how you're going to develop this optimization plan how the public is going to be able to input <coughs> and exactly what's going to be in there. I think if you had even acknowledged this and stated that within those, that optimization public land plan, that you would address all of the issues that have been coming up every time I've been to a hearing here, there would be a lot less consternation regarding what you guys are planning on doing and how far you plan on going with this, let's go develop everything within that can produce revenue so that we can go take care of whatever conservation land is left. If you have 100 acres of conservation land and develop 75 to go produce money to go take care of the other 25, I don't call that plan an optimization plan and neither do I believe that that was the intent of the PLDC with how it was formulated. So I would really, and it, that piece, by the way, is not in my testimony because it was something that I just skimmed through the bill again, but I think that you owe it to the public to be able to address that section of the law in your rules because that is what a lot of us have been stating. You have not illuminated for us how far you're going to go with taking the, the public lands and developing them to the detriment potentially of why they are public lands today and why they are protected. And that I think is a major fallacy of your rules as they are currently written and I really would recommend that before you take these rules even the second draft and say, yes, we're going to go with it. But you really, really consider going back, looking at the law as it's written, and if nothing else, adding this 
the entire piece back into your rules. Because right now, you have nothing but a major uphill battle ahead of you with the way the rules are written, much less the way the law is structured. Right now, you have not allayed any fears from the public of what the potential of this unfettered development could potentially bring forward on the state and our public lands and what people truly hold in their heart as what this state is all about. So my recommendation is I don't think due diligence has necessarily been complete in drafting these rules and I think you need to go back, review Act 55 and write rules that reflect everything that's in this act and not just here's the technical aspects of how we're going to work with the developer versus this guy or that guy or you know we're going to go to the title agency after a planner or developer has come to us with a concept the title agency should be gone to before it ever comes to you in my mind but I think this uh, after reading this again today is really critical and this is nowhere to be found in your rules. And I think it's really critical. Thank you. Uh, Donna Wong, but I know that. Uh, Amy, Timor? And then, Mama. Good afternoon. I'm I appreciate your having this hearing on a level. I live here, and so it's fairly easy for me to get here. But I really feel that you ought to hold this hearing on the neighbor islands as well, since uh, Senator, um, the, no, 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 Senator from the Kauai. He said that one, yes. Uh, so one, he said one third of the. Um, people live on the neighbor islands, and of course a, a lot of land that's affected is on the neighbor islands. I really feel that you need to hold the hearings under revised rules um, there so that they can react to these rules. Uh, a lot of them, I'm sure, have studied first year, first proposed rules, and I'm sure that they have or will study your second proposed rules, but you have to give them an opportunity to testify um, to me, this is like when you have children, you you know, you have one child, and you favor that child by you holding the hearing here, but not on the neighbor islands. It's not fair to the neighbor islanders, even though I live here. Um, the other point I wanted to make is that I was very disappointed to see that there wasn't a full board. I understand that there are five board members, and I see Mr. Isla, and I saw earlier you know, um, Ms. Alice Evans, Mary Alice Evans, and I presume she's a member of the board, but that's two out of five, and I understand that Mr. Haraguchi, you're the executive director and employee. Um, so where are the others? I, I thought that being, because it was going to be held during the day, that more of them would be able to attend. So anyway, I just wanted to make that point. Um, when you have a hearing, it would be nice if the majority of the board members were here to hear and to see the testimony. Thank you very much. Well, I'm, I'm this is for myself. Yeah, for you. We have a disagreement between civil uh, attorneys on whether or not Sunshine Man uh, prevails here on the Act 91, excuse me, on Chapter 91 here. So in an abundance of caution, we're going with the more strict interpretation. So only two board members can appear at, at one time. That's why you only see two. Can appear? That's correct. In order to comply with sunshine. Well, that's strange. I, I never heard that interpretation. It, it, could, is the interpretation. Well, could you give us the names of those the attorneys that gave you that interpretation? Uh -huh. Chapter 91 rules. It's not really clear. This is happening under Chapter 91. 